Hi guys and welcome back to Macaroon. So this was a DIY that I actually wanted to make when Breath of the Wild came out, but I felt it might have been a little obscure. However, when playing Tears of the Kingdom, I stumbled across this side quest and I knew immediately that I had to make this tutorial. You meet a girl pulling a wagon full of handmade sand seal plushies and they end up getting scattered in the woods. Then you have to collect them all back using Ultra Hand within a fixed time limit. Aside from looking adorable, these seals play a much bigger role in the new game. You can also fuse them onto weapons or shields and carry them around with you all the time. So based on this, I think we need a lot more Gerudo sand seal appreciation and it's definitely time to turn these into sock plushies. Each seal is made up of three colors. The trickiest part of making these plushies can often be finding the right shades, and I strongly recommend ordering fluffy socks over Amazon because you've got the biggest selection there. Even though I have a huge collection of socks, it was still a bit challenging to find the perfect color combinations for each seal. I decided to go with blue and red because I didn't have enough socks to make green. For the face and teeth, I'm going to use plain socks because it's much harder to create small details using fluffy fabric. This also gives the plushie a nice change of texture. Start by turning the main body color inside out. Press it flat and draw a teardrop shape across the toe area. Now take some thread and start back stitching along the line. This is basically one stitch forward and then half a stitch back, which produces a very strong seam that won't break easily. Once you're near the end, be sure to leave a gap of about 2 cm open. Cut the shape out and use this gap to turn the sock the right way around. Grab some stuffing and start filling up the seal's body. This part is slightly trickier compared to my other sock plush tutorials because the opening is quite small, so you have to concentrate a bit. My advice is to take one big ball and try to push it inside bit by bit instead of adding small chunks of stuffing. This makes the final result less lumpy. Then close up the opening so you have a nice teardrop shaped body like this. You can use the seams of the sock and the stitching line to check that everything is symmetrical. Next we're going to make the fins and tail. Grab the other two socks, turn them inside out and draw on some leaf shapes. I recommend doing this at the same time because each leaf should be slightly smaller than the previous one. Then finish with another shape that looks a bit like a hot air balloon. Backstitch along all the lines and cut them out. As always, I strongly recommend watching my sewing techniques video if this is your first time making sock plushies. It's quite easy once you get the hang of it, but knowing the right stitches really makes a difference. Now cut a tiny hole at the base and turn it the right way round. Then add some stuffing until they have the desired size. This bulb shape here is going to be the tail, so you can stuff it a bit more until it looks like a ball. Place it onto the body and sew it into place. Here are all the sand seal fins and we're just going to attach them in a row. This tutorial might look complex, but it's actually not that difficult at all. It only uses basic techniques that are repeated a lot, so once you get the hang of these, then you can work fairly quickly. Whenever you reach the end of your thread, exit the needle somewhere on the body like this. This hides the thread perfectly so you don't have any visible loose ends hanging out. I'm very pleased with how this looks so far, and next we're going to make the arms. Draw a shape that looks a bit like the front part of a fish with an open mouth. This should be tilted very slightly. Then use the same method of backstitching, cutting out and flipping around to create the final shape. Sew these onto the sides of the body and be sure to check that they're positioned symmetrically. The easiest way is to look at it from underneath and the arms should look a bit like little wings. Now the basic body is finished. Next we're going to create the facial features using smooth socks. A simpler alternative would be to cut the shapes out of fabric felt and stick them on using glue, so feel free to do that if you're a beginner. Start by folding the fabric in half, or of course in this case, just using the edge of the sock. Then sketch out half of the sand sealed face. 
I did this freehand, which wasn't too hard, but if you're unsure, then you can always make a template using paper or card. Now cut the shape out carefully and sew it into place starting from the middle point at the very top. You have to work carefully here because the stitches are fully visible. Be sure to use very small stitches that shouldn't be more than 1mm apart. You might also have to stretch the fabric a tiny bit while you're working so it fits over the three-dimensional surface of the face. Stop sewing once you get to the bottom part of these three whisker things. The last step is to make the tusks, and I'm using a regular white sock for this. Don't forget to turn it inside out, and then sketch out two pointy triangles. This shape is fairly small, so you might need to use tools to help you flip it around and stuff the inside. Then push it under the yellow fabric and sew everything into place. A slightly easier method would be to make the teeth using needle felt, or just cut them out of white fabric and stick on using glue. I'm really happy with how these turned out. I made the red one as well, and this took me around one and a half hours. This isn't very long at all, considering how much time a regular plushie takes to make, where you have to trace and cut patterns out of fabric. Socks are inherently three-dimensional, so you just need to sew a single line, and all that volume comes from stuffing. They're also a lot more cost-effective than buying big pieces of fabric just to make one or two plushies. For example, in this DIY, I needed three colors for every seal, and I had the perfect amount of material. I didn't have to buy half a meter of fabric just for the tiny bits needed for the fins. To make the eyes, I'm going to use real buttons, because I think the original sand seal eyes look so iconic. But of course, you can also use more fabric or even paint instead. I was lucky to find these two jars of random buttons in blue and red, and thought there would definitely be something inside that fits. However, it was surprisingly hard to find identical matching pairs, so I ended up having to pick through the entire pot. Sew the buttons on using very small stitches so it doesn't pull on the fabric. Then tie several knots to make sure it's firmly attached and exit the plushie from somewhere else. Now you have your very own Gerudo Sand Seal plushie. These would make perfect gifts for any Zelda fan, and I'm surprised they don't exist as official merchandise. If you want to learn more about plushie making, then please check out the playlist I linked below. I'm Joanna, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!